Did you ever understand how truly special it was working at the Fillmore East? Eventually. Um, by the time I was in my 40s, I had students, I had friends, I was meeting lots of new people who were my age, maybe even a little older, who remembered the Fillmore and remembered going to concerts. And they would say, how cool was that? And I'd sit there and go through all that in my mind and go, very. But I didn't realize it when I was doing it. It's sort of like going to Disney World with a little kid. You know, you've been there a bunch of times, you're very jaded by everything you see, but then you take a child with you, and suddenly the entire thing is seen through their eyes. They're experiencing it for the first time. And as an adult, I would sit there listening to people tell me how much the work we did at the Fillmore impacted their day-to-day -day lives. Oh, I worked all week just so I could get there that weekend and see you guys. You know, that made a big change in the way I respected and understood my work. Because suddenly, I realized that I made a difference. And that was a lot of fun. But it took me until I was 40 to get it. <laughs> so then, did you understand how truly exciting it was to work with all those artists? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so. But remember, at the time, it was not unusual to have Rod Stewart come in and say hi, he had the dressing room next to us. It wasn't unusual to have Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull come running in, open the door to the dressing room, throw an umbrella in the air that snaps open as it floats to the ground, and he runs away screaming, the British are coming, the British are coming. You know, these were the things that I did day to day. And it wasn't until all of those people asked me later, at 40 years old, how cool was that, that I got a chance to really think about it. Back then, these were the guys I worked with. Now, it's, wow, that was really cool. Because suddenly, I remember, they were Jefferson Airplane, they were Jethro Tull. And yes, yeah, some of my friends, when they meet me, after all of these years, go, yeah, but you were Pig Light Show. <laughs> <laughs> a great part of it was that what was happening to me was pretty much happening to every one of them. You know, when you suddenly get fame at a young age, doing something you love, but the guys who are really good are good because they loved what they did. And to them it was their work and they didn't think about being famous, they thought about how can I make that solo a little better? How can we intro that a little better? And they were going through exactly that same thing where it was work to them. And I meet a lot of them today and they go, holy crap, that was cool. <laughs> and there we go through the same thing. A good friend of mine, Mark Hudson, got famous when he was very young with the Hudson brothers. And we sat down once and we started sharing this and it was exactly the same story. It's a whirlwind. You get moving, you get working, and the fame starts building, but the more your fame is building, the more you're working, and the more you're working, the less time you have to be able to go, wow, what's happening to me? Isn't this cool? Because you don't have time to think about that. And the next thing you know, it's a few years later, you're not quite as famous, or at least not currently famous, and you sit back and go, wow. And somebody says to you, oh, oh it's you. And you go, yeah. <laughs> I was never really super impressed by anybody that I met backstage, except for one time. It was the recording of the Mothers of Invention White Album, the Live at the Fillmore East Album. The show wasn't going to start for another half hour or so, the doors weren't even open. And this guy in a beard and a hat and glasses walks in and walks into the office. I go into the office and he's sitting there in a wheelchair. But I watched him walk in the office. Then I'm introduced to Paul McCartney. Today it's Sir Paul McCartney. But back then it was just Paul. But to me it was a Beatle. That was the one time I was really impressed. Until the late show. 
Because the late show, John and Yoko show up. And John was always my idol. So that was impressive. You know, those two guys meant a lot to me as a musician, as a rock and roll baby. If you grew up in the 60s, the Beatles were it. And it was nice to see that all of the musicians backstage, even the ones that had worked with them, were just as impressed. It was nice. So, moving on to the Liquid Light Shows. How are they done? Uh, the Liquid Light Shows are, I don't want to say the secret, but they were the foundation of what most light shows were about. And, well, why don't I show you? I give you my money, let you live in my home. Give you all you ask for, I never tried to roll. I just don't understand what you're waiting for. Make me wait much longer, I'll show you the door. I don't need no more evasions, it's expired, you won't know. We can videotape it and then make use of that digital video file. If I video record a plate, like this slow plate of green water and orange mineral oil, then with this digital file I might use a video editing application and change the color of the slow plate. Now, perhaps, I'll decide it's a cool idea to multiply the number of plates. Maybe I'd next flip the bottom frames and then the side ones to get a more paint kaleidoscope. Perhaps setting one color against the other would be interesting. Adding an overall shape to overlay the liquid is easy and adds a different kind of interest. But then I could take that shape and spin it. That creates a whole lot of other possibilities. Having that much random equipment takes a long time to set up. There are no theaters set up with a rear projection screen ready for you to walk into, like the Fillmore, the, the Ritz Theater, you know, all of these places that we had done shows. Today it would be really hard. However, today we have computers and we have video projectors. So what I do, as opposed to what all the VJs and, you know, other people do, and especially like TV, where they'll buy a clip that just runs over and over and over and over. Like on American Idol, uh, America's Got Talent, you see the big screen, and you see that one thing that just runs over and over and over, the entire song behind whoever's performing. And yeah, if you're the... If you're the director of the show, you can have a shot here, you can have a shot from here and here. But the audience in the theater is just seeing that same loop go over and over and over. So what we do, or I do, is I will sit here in my studio and will record a particular liquid effect. And once we record that effect, I'll, you know, check it, optimize it, clip it. Then we might add some color or change the color or make it black and white. 
And then I'm able to use it in the computer and create all kinds of different effects based on that one live effect. And that becomes a palette of things to use, where in the old light show we'd have a few projectors. And we'd have this liquid, then we'd fade to this one, and this. I can do that and create 50 of them on the computer, and I could never have done that, and who would allow us, who would pay for a light show of a hundred people? Because each one of them is doing a liquid and somebody else is moving that projector around to get the same stuff that we're getting here. Or the slideshows. You know, we'd have two sets of slide banks like that, one on either side of the stage to cover the wide screen. Well. That was great, but we had to have 1,000-watt slide projectors built by our, ourselves. And we still didn't get quite the brightness we wanted on the screen, where today I can do it digitally. Either take the actual slides shot on the screen and then digitally enhance them so the colors are brighter, the blacks are blacker. And it's a little bit more exciting. Here we see a standard old-school style slide effect. Four high contrast slides behind the color wheel. Here is a similar type of slide, but each of the four is drawn digitally and slightly differently, each given a color wheel simulation different from the others. All are drawn and animated digitally in a simple slideshow application by my hand. Notice how crisp the contrast is, how vibrant the color. That is the type of thing we fought so hard to achieve in our old rear projection shows. So easy straight to digital. Here is what it looks like when you put it all together. Then of course, I may decide it would look great as a kaleidoscope. A computer may open up thousands of possibilities, but when the computer is not doing them for you, there is a lot of work involved before an audience ever sees it. Thank you for joining me, Jennifer Rubenstein, and my father, Mark Rubenstein. And as the Romans would say, fiat lux. Let there be light. <laughs>